Hello there, and welcome to Doc Tales. Uh, yeah. Today, I'm uh, drinking sure. raspberry bubbly. What are yeah. you drinking? Uh, I've got a little tequila sunset, I guess, or sunrise. <laughs> it's sunsetting here, yes, it and is. luckily it is. Uh, really kind of need a couple Advil after the workout today with the locks. Oh, my goodness. So, now, today, what i got to tell you is... i got to tell well, somebody oh, something. i got to tell you what? Is, I appreciate the first time we came through here on the Erie Canal in Oswego is I never left the bridge because I thought, well, I'm just going to stay up here and keep the engines running. Yep. And that, I'll go back and forth, what Rev said, oh. use the thrusters. And yep. uh, this new way works out pretty good, except for <laughs> the wind today yeah. was horrendous. It was coming right up the back, kind of quartering. And as you saw in some of the videos, I was at the end of my rope on that one. Yes, you and I were. was. I had to let go. Yes, yeah, yes. I had to let go and then run up into the bridge, start the engines, and use the thrusters. I mean, it worked out, but it was <sighs> the day fierce. was supposed to be nice. It's Sunday morning. Yeah, it was supposed to be easy, like Sunday morning, and it, yeah. it was anything but so eleven miles. It was what, what could go wrong, right? It was only like. Two miles, I mean, two hours of traveling, wasn't it? Two hours of traveling, yeah, I guess. About Something like that. Between Not the a time lot. we spent in the, in the locks, maybe. Yeah, maybe three close hours. To three. Yeah. So we had a lovely evening in Fulton. The best restaurant, the Blue Moon. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It that was, was delicious. Yeah. Um, and then this morning, we were. We could see, as you know, lock three. It was just right there. Well, Sam calls the lock master, and um, he was he had heard another boat was coming the opposite way, so he was waiting on them. And Sam's like, okay, sure, no problem. Well, then, I don't know, ten, called, yeah. ten minutes later, he called back and told us to come on. He was going to lower it mm -hmm. or raise the water so we could get in and then lower it for us. That was our buddy Sid that was at um, Lock, Lock two. Yeah. 2, yeah. Went through there, no problems. Yeah, I could tell it was going to be a little bit of a challenge. It, it was windy the that whole time. It was a 27-foot drop, and he went down pretty fast, and yeah. then I could start to feel the wind. So, And then another, <clears throat> what, six or seven miles to Lock 5. Something like that. And Lock 5 was challenging. But it was open. We didn't have to yeah. wait. We would never had to wait. We just went boom, boom, boom yeah. in through the rest of them. Yeah. But it started in lock five, I think, where yeah. we just started having issues with the wind. You know, our boat's really tall, so it acts like a sail. Mm -hmm. You know, the wind is... Uh, Particularly, it was coming right on the back and pushing it and kind of cornering it, uh, pushing it to the port. And so I was trying to hang on, as you saw on the back there to the ropes and uh, <laughs> had I listened to my first mate I probably would have used the boat hook to get, grab a cable and uh, wrapped a rope around it but I thought no I'll be able to hold it and I couldn't so we were not, experimenting what not to do yeah and at one point uh, what I had to run up and just I I had to let go. I couldn't hold it any longer. Yeah. And uh, come up start the engines. And that was in lock seven and then in lock eight the lock master she saw us struggling and she said it's just you know the wind and the size of your boat why don't there's no other boats in here just let go of the lines and start up and yeah. just kind of stay in the middle and that's what we ended up and that was the best thing for us to do yeah. lock eight is just i mean the marina is right around the corner from lock eight so I was trying to rush and get the lines out and everything, and then we're almost here, and Sam's talking to the lock mast, or the uh, marina, and she said, go bow in, and it's going to be a port tie. So, I had to change all the lines at the last minute, and uh, we had fenders on both sides, so that wasn't an issue. But, but Yeah, I got um, in. So, lesson learned for me uh -huh. is, okay, because... I'm new at handling these lines now, and when we do the Trent Severn, hopefully next year, you do have to shut the engines off in the locks. So uh, I will be out there, but one of the things is, even though I had a boat pole ready, 
yeah. is I didn't have a line ready in the oh. cockpit, and oh. I grabbed, luckily you had it laid uh, out down yeah. here, mm -hmm. I grabbed it on the way down and was able to, um, in that one lock, oh, I think I it was lock where seven. You got that. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. and one of the lock masters uh, was willing to help, and mm -hmm. then of course, I said, oh no, I've got it. <laughs> Yeah, in retrospect, fine. like really, you know yeah. what? I could have taken a little help from him. And I wish so. I would have had him wrap my line around a cable too, because that's more, you know. Yeah. I feel like I'm more secure than just holding this rope and yeah. using my brute strength. And every time, you know, we started recently going through locks on our second loop, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta lift weights <laughs> when we're off on winter sabbatical. <laughs> Yeah, gonna lift some weights. I'll be stronger yeah. to do those Trent Severin locks. No more noodle arms. <laughs> so I guess the lesson learned is, you know, is have a boat pole and a line ready and gloves. And that was another issue for me today was yeah, you had a lot of issues. I had gloves on, <laughs> but going down in the lock, of course, as the line is coming out of the water, it's nice and slimy. It's yeah. all over my gloves, and at one point, I was at the end of that, barnacles, luckily, I had gloves on, because I would have never been able to hold it, oh. but there's all barnacles on the rope, huh. and so then I run back up here to um, start the engines, and my gloves are all slimy, and they're <laughs> slipping all over the wheel, so... Uh, he had mud had, everywhere up here. Yeah, yeah so... That was a mess. I had to clean up an aisle one up here, so... <laughs> Anything well, else? Oh my goodness, it oh, was just but, exhausting. You know, so we got here and uh, we we went up and after we got the boat tied down, I got checked in. There's a little what tavern sports, up here? Sports bar. Mm -hmm. It's called Press Room, I think. The best nachos I've oh, ever had yes. in my life, and I am from Texas. Pork nachos or something. Pork, um, pork, pulled pork yeah, nachos. like pulled pork nachos. Yeah. If you're a nacho fan, you got to try them. So, sun is uh, going to be setting yeah. over Lake Ontario here uh, off to our starboard uh, stern. So, we're going to watch that and uh, just sit back and chill out. And we think there is a window tomorrow midday where the winds aren't going to be, well, the waves aren't going to be so bad going across uh, Lake hope, Ontario. I hope not. Just about 40 miles across there and uh, planning to go up to Sackett's Harbor, so uh, Navy Point Marina. So uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, here's to you from the Here's to Us. Cheers. See you next time. <laughs>